Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Casey Gilly and Joe Jaro, the dynamic duo bringing you Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer number one. In a world ruled by darkness, Buffy Summers is the last Slayer. A magical catastrophe has ended the Slayer line and nearly blotted out the sun, allowing vampires to prey on humanity unimpeded. Now in her 50s, Buffy wages a desperate one-woman fight against the forces of evil. That is, until she stumbles across something she hasn't seen in a long time. Hope. In the form of a prophecy. And the young girl who carries it. Oh my gosh. Okay, Casey, Joe, this is so exciting to bring the world of Buffy back. I want to ask, first of all, would you, Casey, I'm going to go with you first. Would you describe this series as a standalone Elseworlds story? Or how much do you think readers actually need to know about Buffy before going into this? If you have never seen, read, or watched Buffy before, you can absolutely enjoy this series. If you are a diehard Buffy fan, I hope you will enjoy this series. It is an approachable place to start in. It is a standalone Elseworld series. So uh, it does not impact the main timeline, which gave us a lot of really cool freedom. And I hope that it's something that people will find approachable with uh, enough references to the source material to be fun and interesting, but also open enough for people to begin their relationship with Buffy. I love that. Joe, how much do you think people should know about Buffy before you jump in? Um, I'm, I'm with Casey on this. Uh, if, if you don't, if you're just going in cold, it's, it's the, it's totally in the title of it. She's a vampire slayer. She's the last vampire slayer. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know what the premise is, but it definitely helps. Um, if you have some knowledge of, of the background, um, you know, just little Easter eggs here and there that you might pick up on and be like, Oh, that's awesome. But, um, yeah, no, you can go in, in it cold and I think still enjoy it. Fantastic. I love that. I love it when people can just jump right in. Okay. So in most stories, when we're introduced to an older protagonist who's no longer in their prime, but still tough enough to kick some butt, it's usually men, you know, let's, let's not lie here. Um, in books and movies, you get like Stallone and Bruce Willis types that are like still super fit and strong. And it's really just refreshing that we get an older femme character who is just as strong and agile as the male counterparts are. So Casey, we're in the middle of this apocalypse now. We've got vampires roaming around during the day. There's no slayers left to protect humanity. What inspiration went into this concept for you with an aging Buffy having to fight against evil in the shadows? So I, uh, I turned 41 a couple of days ago. And I had a baby. Congrats. Thank you. And I had uh, a baby four years ago. And with the birth of my son, I started to notice that I got my own superpower, which was invisibility. I was completely ignored, looked over. I started noticing people just like flat out running into me, no casual chit chat anymore. And it was something that my peers were also experiencing where um, women reach a certain age, and I think that it is very easy for society to say that we no longer have value because we aren't 23, or mm. we have reached some, you know, nebulous made up prime and are now just on this downward slide. And when I thought about Buffy, somebody who had been incredibly powerful and incredibly dynamic and having to conceal this huge part of herself and live invisibly, you know, what would that be like? To me, that's something very relatable, especially to people that are my age who grew up with Buffy, that we are probably experiencing a little bit. Sorry, Joe and guys who are readers, but it it's not something that y'all experience the same way. And uh, to me, it felt very important to have her both enjoy and mourn that she has to keep part of herself hidden and that part of her just isn't seen as valuable anymore when every single part of her and every woman of any age is valuable. I love that message, Casey. Thank you so much for sharing that because I mean, it is true. We are told as women, like we hit a certain age and that's it, we're done. And so to see that We've got Buffy in her 50s and she's still kicking butt and she's still just as important. I think that's going to be really amazing 
for readers to see and to take in and to understand. So I really appreciate you um, sharing that with everybody. Thank you. I just, I also just want to be clear. 50 is not old. 50 no. is not old. Like somebody who's like a size eight is like Hollywood fat. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. um, Buffy is in her fifties and it's been a hard road to get there. So I think that she is feeling it a little bit more than uh, other people of that same age, but writing this and I, I'm, I'm going to speak for Joe, just looking at his artwork, drawing it. I don't think that we view Buffy as somebody who is old by any means, but she's definitely, I think, the oldest slayer who's ever lived. I don't think anyone expected her to live this long or any of them to live this long. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you for all of that. That's just, no, that's so amazing. No, it's, it puts things into perspective because it's true. It's just, it's all just numbers. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're all people and we're all important and we all have value. So when you share that in something that is as well known as Buffy, that is something that I think is really going to resonate with a lot of the readers. So again, thank you for sharing that. Um, and I would love to turn it over to Joe because I, I want to gush about his art for a second. So I would like to know, first of all, it's beautiful. It's all gorgeous and so well done. And Thank you. I would like to, yeah, you're so welcome. Oh my God. Um, what went into the character design for creating a 50 something year old Buffy? Do you, do you feel like she's more aged by like time and just getting older? Or is it just like everything that she has had to experience has also contributed to, to aging her? Not that she's old by any means, right. but just, you know, she's older. Yeah, no, I'm totally with Casey. I'm I'm 45. If 50 is like right around the corner, is not old. Um, it's definitely circumstance. Um, but with Buffy, I actually, I mean, it's you know we're we're basing it off of the TV series starring Sarah Michelle Gellar, and she is in her 40s now. So it wasn't too big of a stretch, um, you know, just using her as as a guideline basically. Um, but this Buffy, our Buffy. Uh, she doesn't have the benefit of, you know, a personal trainer or a dietitian or just time to prune herself or whatever, or, or, you know, just to take care of herself. She is, she has a hard, she, you know, she's had a hard life. So it comes out in, you know, some lines here and there. Um, um, and her body's definitely, you know, has, has been worn throughout, throughout the years of, of fighting vampires. Um. But yeah, no, but she's buff. She, she is buffy. She's training. She's still training. So, I mean, she's, she's pretty fit. You know, she can, she can still, uh, you know, give it to them all. Um, but, you know, just, it, just aging her, just, you know, just a few lines here and there. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it, it's kind of crazy. It's 50 years old. You have, it's, it's all over the spectrum. So, um, but yeah, just, uh, it's definitely circumstance not her age. Uh, that's, you know, how, how, how I looked at it. Can I gush on awesome. Joe for a second? Yeah, oh, please. No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, he turned in a page a few days ago. That is one of the, one of the sexy pages and one of the issues. <laughs> and when I wrote it, it, it was actually the first page I wrote for the entire series and it was way out of context. It's in issue three. And I was like, this scene is happening. Um, I saw the page from Joe and my first thought was, I hope I look that good at 50. I would honestly like to have looked that good at 25. It's gorgeous. It is the exact right amount of skin. And what you see is like just this perfect moment of how Buffy has really earned everything that is on her body. I love it. Just how, if I can, just how you wrote it is a perfect blend of like, Exterior, she is, I mean, she's, you know, pretty cut. I mean, you can tell she can fight. Um, but that page, and I told Casey this, was it flowed so easily when I went from reading it to laying it out to, to you know, finishing it. Um, it was a perfect blend of vulnerability with the exterior of, like, this tough, like, you know, fighter. But she's definitely showing some some emotion there. Um, but yeah, it flowed awesome. I think that was like I, I, one of one of our be best pages. It's a really good page. I'm excited for people to see it. I'm excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, so jumping off of that, Joe, I want to ask you. 
how do you balance illustrating a character that has to adhere to a canon storyline, but also putting your own style on it? How do you do that? Oh, man. So that is the trickiest thing. I mean, you can see it in all kinds of fandoms, you know, Star Wars or, or whatever. It's you can't make everyone happy. You just you just mm -hmm. can't. If you try, you're just, you're, I think you'll fail. Um, so what, how I look at it is what made me a fan, what made me a fan of Buffy, um, and just take that core and, you know, keep it there, but you know, everything else I, you know, feel free, you know, for anybody else out there, feel free to like go as far out as you can, you know, cause you never know if you're, if you keep yourself stuck in that, whatever, how it was, uh, portrayed before, then you're not going to get anything new and exciting. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, you just, what made me a fan, just keep that core there and, and just let it rip. So. I love it. It works so well. So Casey, my next question for you is this first issue is like jam packed with a perfect combination of tragedy. We've got mystery, we've got a lore. And of course we have all of the nostalgia for the Buffy fans, but okay. But the last page, the last page Oh my gosh, such a bombshell. I have so many questions. So without spoiling too much, like what does this mean going forward? And like, do we maybe get to see the return of some fan favorites, maybe? I, I don't wanna spoil it. I will say that part of what I think makes this series interesting and difficult is that Buffy is very alone. And there are some fan favorites who return, but definitely not as many as she has been surrounded with in the past. Uh, but there are some characters that readers have never met before that Joe has done an amazing job designing and really bringing to life who I have a lot of feelings about. Um, and I hope that everybody, including Buffy can make some new friends too. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this to hit shelves. I'm so excited for everyone to pick it up and read it and explore this new side of Buffy. Casey, Joe, thank you both so much for your time today. It has been so great chatting with the both of you. And for those of you watching at home, be sure to pick up Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer number one in stores now. If you want to stay up to date on all of our amazing content, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification button.